Well, hello, everybody. It's Jay Johnson, and I am excited to uh, conduct this interview today. I am with Randolph Metricom Rotary Club, and we have an incredible fundraiser coming up on June 30th, 2022, right around the corner. We're just weeks away. It is a casino night honoring our frontline EMS and healthcare workers, and it's going to take place on June 30th from 6 to 9 p.m., at the Blue Bonnet Palace in Selma, right off of Lookout Road. So you're invited to come join us to celebrate uh, those that take care of us on a recurring basis, and most certainly those that uh, over the last two plus years have uh, really been enduring a lot as we have been in this COVID kind of environment. But I'm joined in this interview uh, with one of our platinum sponsors of the event. Uh, I'm joined by Michael Beaver, CEO of Methodist Hospital Northeast. And Michael, I really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Thanks, Jay. I, I appreciate the opportunity. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks, sir. And and just so everyone knows, Michael is also an active member of our Rotary Club. So, you know, I, I always have the good fortune of being able to see him at least a few times a month. And uh, definitely I'm looking forward to just having some dialogue with you, Michael, letting everybody hear a little more about you, uh, Methodist Nor uh, Hospital Northeast and your mission and what you all are doing. And and if you're ready, I, I would maybe just like to tee up how long has Methodist Hospital been in our area how long have you been with them and what are your specific roles and responsibilities sure thanks Jay so uh, Methodist Hospital Northeast has been serving this Randolph Metricom area for decades now hospital was built in 1985 so if my maths is right that's about 37 years um, really continuing to grow with this community when this hospital was established uh, many decades ago, this community that we serve was, was far different than it is today. And it has continued to grow dramatically and our hospital is coming right alongside this community to continue to grow and add services and, and support the needs of the community. I've been in my role here as CEO for eight years and I've been with Methodist Healthcare System for 16 years. So I've seen a lot of change in my time. Uh, we've been able to do quite a bit here at the hospital over the last eight years and I'm incredibly encouraged about our future here and our ability to continue to serve the community in a meaningful way. I love it. I, uh, I can tell you I've personally received care there at the hospital. Uh, I don't, it's probably been 10 years now as I think about it. And, uh, but I know that that's not something that any of us, you know, uh, wake up saying, hey, I may go need care today, but I will tell you from beginning to end, uh, your staff were incredible. Uh, I'm not someone who likes to be poked and prodded, but uh, from, from being admitted and then going through a procedure and then discharged, your entire team were incredible. Michael, you, what, do you, what do you love? What do you love about what you do? You know, I, I have a really unique um, job here, and I, I tell our new employees this all the time. We have a lot of people who are early in their careers and they're coming into healthcare and have made that choice to serve their community. And um, I, I truly believe in healthcare, we have a unique opportunity to impact people's lives in a meaningful way every single day. If you think about the typical person coming to the hospital, you know, they're, they're dealing with some kind of situation that's brought them here. It's, it's usually not their best day. They're dealing with a lot of uncertainty, they may be in pain, um, you know, maybe don't know what's around the corner. And we have the opportunity to help come in and help relieve that anxiety and provide compassionate, compassionate care that really can help people in their most vulnerable times. I just think it's a, it's a truly unique opportunity. And the people who choose to do this kind of work in our hospital are people who are answering a calling. And that's, that's what I love the most about the opportunity that I have. I don't have the clinical skills or training that most of the people here in my hospital do, but I can do my work through them. And I find that to be incredibly rewarding. I love that a lot. Is it a rough idea, Michael, how big the team is there at, at your hospital? Yeah, so our hospital is growing pretty dramatically. You know, just over the last several years, we've invested about $150 million into this campus. And so we are continuing to expand. Uh, but our hospital has 238 beds and we have roughly 1,000 employees. That's a lot. Yeah. And, and 
more beds and more employees to come over the next several years. I no doubt and and needed. I quite frankly, right. Just to be honest, we're uh, an aging society. We're living longer, and right. that that is a a bonus, of course. But then there's there's additional care that's required because of of that increase. So. I don't know, uh, Michael, I never want to uh, cast ill light on anyone else. So I just want to keep it really focused on Methodist Hospital Northeast. Is there something or a few things that you could call out that you would say make what you all do there uh, unique? Yeah, no, I I appreciate that. That's a great question um, because I do think that we're unique. Um, I think the first thing that I would say just for Methodist Hospital Northeast in particular we are truly a community-based hospital. We have deep relationships in the community that we serve. We serve a lot of different municipalities, uh, but as a, as a member of this community, you understand those municipalities all work very closely together in a very collaborative way. And so we have a relationship um, with the community, I think is very special, so that's, that's the first thing. Second thing I would say is we are truly a mission-driven organization. Um, every hospital in the country has a mission, a mission statement, Um, Some hospitals put it up on the wall. Some of them put it in a binder that they pull out every now and then. But we are a unique organization because we talk about our mission statement every single day. Every single person in our hospital knows what the mission statement is. We begin our meetings by, we we say, let's remind ourselves why we're here. And then we recite our mission statement together. And it's the, the crux of the mission statement is really about serving humanity to honor God. At the end of the day, that's that's why we're here and why we've chosen uh, the career paths that we've chosen. I, I don't like to think that we hire people to do jobs. I, I like to think that we select people to help us fulfill our mission. It's just a different mindset. And so that mission focus is a really, really big part of what we do. I love that a lot. You know, what I hear you talking about when you say that is culture and, uh, and people. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think people love uh, being inside a place where they uh, feel like they're serving alongside of other people with similar values and similar focus, and it's more of a team and collegial uh, collaborative environment. So I know that's what I experienced when I received care at your hospital, and I love uh, hearing that you all start that, uh, your day often with that mission statement. Absolutely. You know, you shared a little bit about community, Michael, and, and how uh, you understand that y'all are a part of not just one, but all of these and these interconnections. What is it? Is, is there something, I mean, hearing your mission statement, is there anything else you would share that kind of speaks to why you all get out and do the things you do in the community? We're not talking just a place where people come to see you. You and your team are very active out in the community. One example is the fundraiser we have coming up. Uh, even though this one is supporting healthcare workers and people may you know, say, well, there's a direct you know, tie-in to that. I know for a fact that you all are heavily engaged in many, many other efforts. So what is it about your involvement in the community that's important? Yeah, so first I'll acknowledge, of course, this isn't one I could pass up, you know, being able to help frontline workers. Um, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been a rough ride for the last couple of years through COVID. And that's not just for hospital workers, that's for all of our other partners out there, from EMS and fire and police and military and everybody um, who didn't have the option to stay home and, and be safe, but had to every day wake up and make a decision to come into work, to come into the hospital, to, to go to the police station, to go to the fire station, to go to EMS, and knowingly put themselves in harm's way every day. And so having an opportunity to, to recognize those folks is something we absolutely couldn't pass up. Uh, but, but you're right, we do a lot of other things in the community. We you know, largely try to work with our community partners and figure out ways that we can serve. As a healthcare organization, you know, one of our areas of expertise, expertise is of course around health. And so we do a lot of things, um, in terms of health fairs and things like that in the community where we can really help in that regard. We do a lot of things around um, education and awareness like for heart month and breast cancer awareness, things like that. And also just finding other ways that we can partner. You know, another one we do with the Rotary in particular is the Fairway for Kids, the big golf tournament that we have later this year that raises a significant amount of funding for school children and families that that really need that kind of support. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're a community-based hospital. Our 
our relationship with this community is incredibly important to us. We, we want to have that kind of relationship where they rely on us and we rely on them. You know, I'll, I'll tell you through COVID, um, that relationship with the community was really demonstrated through the support the community gave to this hospital. Um, you know, we had countless um, restaurants and other enterprises in the community wanting to support us and restaurants delivering meals for our staff, completely unsolicited, just wanted to let us know how much they appreciated us. We had other businesses buying meals from the restaurants and delivering those here, even if they weren't in the industry. Again, just to let us know, we, we appreciate you. And that, that meant a tremendous amount to our team and a, a tremendous amount to, to me personally, that relationship we have with the community. And, and I'll, I'll tell you another area that it, it manifests in just the demonstration of, of the support we receive the San Antonio News Express every year does a Reader's Choice um, Award, and they have nominations from the community, and then the community votes on different categories. And in the hospital category, um, in 2020, I'm sorry, 2021, Methodist Hospital Northeast was nominated, and we were pretty excited about being nominated. And to be honest with you, the other four hospitals that were nominated were all significantly larger than us. And we thought, well, you know, kind of like the Academy Awards, it's nice to be nominated. We appreciate the nomination. But, you know, our expectation to win wasn't really very high. And we, in fact, won. We, we won Best Hospital in San Antonio in 2021. And we thought that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and then we were nominated again in 2022, and we won again. I love that. And the only way that we can do that is because of the support we have from the community. You know, it's the relationship that we have, and, and we just, we really, truly value that. I love hearing that. And, and I, I don't know if any other award could maybe be more meaningful to anyone than to know that it's voted on by uh, people in the community. So that just goes yeah. to show that they recognize the impact you all are making and they appreciate you all. So I love hearing that, Michael. That's fantastic news. Uh, if we were to shift a little bit now to this specific fundraiser that you all, uh, Methodist Hospital Northeast, are, are sponsors for, What's going to happen that evening to all who are watching this video is EMS and healthcare workers, you get to show up on June 30th at six o'clock at Blue Bonnet Palace. You do not have to pay a thing. We're going to get you in the room and we're just going to express our appreciation for you. Uh, we're going to have casino style games. Think about roulette tables and craps tables and Texas Hold'em and Blackjack and the company coming in to do this, they have professional trained uh, individuals in each one of these games, and they're going to teach you how to do them. If you don't know how, you're going to get chips that you'll get to play with. There's no actual money uh, being exchanged during these activities, during the gaming. But what you will get is at the end of the night, you get to cash in your chips, you get some uh, tickets, and we will have some really incredible uh, auction uh, or items up for uh, drawing, if you will, you'll get to go determine where you drop your tickets in and they'll draw from uh, the tickets for each one of those items and somebody's going to walk away with these. So we just want you to show up. Now, if you're somebody who just wants to come out and also express appreciation for these frontline EMS and healthcare workers, you're invited. You, there's a small fee at the door and uh, you're welcome in the room. We're going to have food. We're going to have drinks. We're going to have Marissa D. Flores performing that evening. If you've never heard her, an incredible young lady, a uh, beautiful voice. She'll probably do three 20-minute sets, I think, is what we're going to have. So, Michael, I don't know. What are you most looking forward to when you think about this evening? Have you done something like this in the past? Yeah, so we, we hosted this event last year, but unfortunately, the event was scheduled right at a time when we had a COVID surge. Mm. So I know for my hospital in particular, not a lot of people can make it there. So I'm really excited to be able to do this this year. The people that went last year had a great time. It's a lot of fun. Um, I will admit that I personally enjoy rolling the dice every now and then. <laughs> so um, there were folks last year that had never played craps before. And I, I enjoy teaching people how to play craps. It's, it's just a lot of fun. So uh, what I'm most looking forward to is just allowing some of those frontline workers to have a night of just having fun. Lots of smiles, lots of laughter. Um, some of them are going to get lucky and they're going to leave with some really great prizes too. It's, it's just a bonus. So just an opportunity to, to thank those folks and allow them to have a really good time. I agree. I look forward to that too. And, and it is fun. And, and craps is new to me. 
uh, rolling the dice. Uh, someone taught me a year ago at one of these casino events. I have to tell you, I've already forgotten everything they taught me. So I'm going to need to do this again just to reinforce. But it is a lot of fun. We hope all of you watching this are going to come out and join us June 30th, 6 to 9 p.m., Blue Bonnet Palace. Let's show our appreciation for those that are always there for us, uh, maybe behind the scenes, right? Maybe, maybe uh, it hasn't been something you've had to go receive care around recently, but they're always there should we need it. And so it's a great way just to honor and recognize them. Michael, is there anything else you'd like to share just about your team at Methodist Hospital Northeast or any general comments for everybody watching? Well, you know, again, I appreciate the opportunity to first participate and, and help sponsor this event and the opportunity to talk about it today. Um, you know, I, I guess the only thing that I, I would uh, mention that we haven't talked about is I just want to briefly explain to people a little bit about Methodist Healthcare System because we have served this community for more than 50 years, more than 60 years now in San Antonio throughout the organization or throughout the entire organization the community. A lot of people don't understand this about our organization though. We're, we're a 50-50 joint ventured organization. And our governing board has two votes. One of them is with HCA, which is the largest hospital company in the United States of America. We have about 45 hospitals just in Texas. So huge Texas presence for that organization. The other owner is Methodist Healthcare Ministries, and they're a local not-for-profit based right here in San Antonio, whose sole purpose is to provide healthcare-related services to people who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford it. And we don't do a good enough job telling the story, but what I want people to understand is that not only do we serve the community through the work we do here at the hospital, but any earnings that we get get, get distributed to the two partners, and the ministries takes their half and they reinvest it back in our community. That's amazing. There's a, there's a 74 county area of South Texas that they serve from north of Bear County all the way down to the Mexican border and all the way up the Gulf of Mexico. And they provide services through grant programs, through clinics, and through something called the Wesley uh, Nursing Structure, where they have nurses in these communities to provide services to people who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford it. And last year, just last year, the ministry spent about $110 million to fund all of those services in South Texas. That's a, that's a ministry that we provide through the work that we do here at the hospital. And I don't think most people in the community are, are even aware of that. And I just think we need to do a better job letting them know about not just the great work doing, happening here in the hospital, but the great work that happens outside of the hospital that's funded from hospital operations. I am so glad you brought that in, Michael. I had no idea, to be honest with you. And now we're going to help get this message out because I do think that that's worthy of, of letting people know about. Uh, I love that about who you all are and what you do. Uh, again, I'm just going to say I really appreciate you for taking time out of your really busy schedule to do this. We really appreciate everything you all are doing in the community uh, we are here in this interview just talking about you all being platinum sponsors again, one of our top sponsors for this casino night will do to honor our frontline EMS and healthcare workers, but enjoyed this time immensely, Michael. Uh, again, this is an interview with Michael Beaver, CEO of Methodist Hospital Northeast. Michael, thanks for your time. I look forward to seeing you on the 30th. I certainly look forward to seeing you at an upcoming Rotary Luncheon. Sounds great. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, sir.